Okay, so we're going to look at calculus, a uh, definition of a derivative. So first we're going to look at the definition of a derivative for an entire function. So what a derivative is, um, it allows us to see the slope of the function at a point, at a single point, which is weird because how can you find the slope of a function with just one point okay so if i look at my graph here i'm going to call this value uh, x and this value is f of x okay so what we're going to do is look at another value that is like x2 okay and i know that if i want to to figure out the slope between these two points, I would just like, you know, if I make a line like this, um, the slope would be the change in X and then over my run, my change in Y. So this distance from X to X2, we call that H or change in X. So what we're actually gonna do is make that change in X just smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So like something like, you know, if maybe I'm gonna find the slope where the change in X is really, really, really close to the two points. And then I'm gonna try and find my change in X where the slope is even smaller or the change in X is even smaller until I get to the point where the change in X I'm actually going to graph two dots on top of each other. So my change in X or my H value is zero. So we say that the limit as X approaches as, sorry, H approaches zero of F of X plus H um, minus F of X over H. So this is just a slope formula. So this would be like, my first output um, minus my second output all over the change in X, so just H. Or another way we write this, we can actually use this notation, the change in X. As the change in X goes to zero, we have the F of X plus the change in X minus our original output all over the change in X. So um, what we're going to do is now think about some different ways that, or I'm going to tell you some different ways we can, um, denote that we are writing a derivative. So a derivative is written like this, F prime of X. So the derivative of X, uh, we can also write it dy dx. We sometimes write it y prime. Uh, we can write it d dx of f of x, so the derivative of f of x, and then sometimes we even write it like this, dx of y. Um, this one's really not that common. Number five is not that common. The rest of them we'll see quite a bit, okay? So what we're gonna do is go ahead and find the limit um, of f of x, equals 2x minus 3 using our limit definition of a derivative. So I'm going to start with f the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I am going to take this function and we're going to substitute x plus h in. So the limit as x approaches 0. So of 2 times x plus h minus 3. And then we're going to subtract the original f of x. So 2x minus 3. All right. And then we just say that is all over h. Okay, we're going to simplify a lot. So the limit as h goes to 0, let's expand. Distribute 2x plus 2h minus 3. Distribute minus 2x plus 
3 all over h. And I see that uh, these 3s cancel, the 2x's cancel, leaving me with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2h over h. And I also see that these h's are going to cancel, which just means that I have 2. So when I use this limit definition of a derivative, what I'm saying is that, therefore, the derivative f prime of x is equal to 2. So let's conceptualize this a little bit. If I look at what 2x minus 3 is, okay, that would be like, sorry, I need 3, up 1 over 2, 1 over 2. What I get is a, a line, so this is f of x is equal to 2x minus 3. And I want you to tell me at every, so what is the rate of change for every single point on this graph? Well, it's constant, right? We know that the slope is the same no matter where I'm standing. So if I started here, I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1 of 2 over 1, of 2 over 1, of 2 over 1. Does it ever change on this graph? No. So the what we say the derivative is the ch is basically the rate of change at any point on the graph. And because we have a line, the rate of change is always 2. So the slope of f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 uh, is 2. And it's always 2 because the slope of a linear equation does not change. It's constant. It doesn't change. It's pretty cool like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at another one. So this one... What type of function are we starting with? We're starting with a cube function, so it's going to be a little different. So let's go ahead and start with our limit definition. The limit as, so as the change in x gets towards zero, so the two points are right, the two points that usually make up our slope equation are just going to be like, you know, on top of each other. So if I have f of x plus h minus f of x, over h, what I'm going to do is, um, oh, sorry, this one, um, we're actually going to graph look something like this. This is a sketch. Please know this. Actually. Okay, so x cubed plus 2 looks something. Okay, so let's say that this is the point um, 2 comma 12. So what I want to do is figure out the tangent line. So the line that it's basically the slope of the graph at this particular point. So how fast it's changing at this particular point. So it's going to look something like this. I know it goes through this x and y value at 2 comma 12 but i need the slope and the slope comes from the derivative so the derivative i'm going to go ahead and start plugging this in is the limit as as h approaches zero of x plus h cubed plus two times x plus h Okay, minus x cubed plus 2x. And that is all over h, all over h. So this part is my x, f of x plus h. Just plugging in x plus h in for x. So I'm going to expand. I've already expanded this on the side. So I get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 
3x h squared plus h cubed, so that's x plus h cubed, um, plus distribute, giving me 2x plus 2h, and then again distribute, so minus x cubed minus 2x all over h, and I see that my negative 2x and my positive 2x cancel, and my x cubed and my positive x cubed cancel. Um, I'm going to look at these four terms that are left, 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed plus 2h all over h. And I notice that they all have an h that I can um, divide out. So I'm going to, let's see, let's go ahead and GCF this so you can see. Okay, on the top, I have h times 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared plus 2 all over h. Those cancel. Now I'm not going to divide by 0 when I substitute in the 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get 3. Well, there's no h to plug in, so 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared plus 2. Well, those go away giving me 3x squared plus 2. So this equation tells me at any x value what the slope of a single point is going to be. So if I look at my model over here, remember where are we looking for the slope? So we call this f prime of x, the derivative. Okay, so that's the derivative of f of x. So this is the slope for all points on the line on my function. But I'm looking for a, a, a slope at a certain point. So what I'm going to do, I'm looking for the slope at when x is equal to 2. So I'm going to say, when is, what is the slope when x is equal to 2? So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, plus 2. So f prime of 2 would be 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14, okay? Um, in other words, the slope of f of x when x is equal to 2, you have to be very specific, is 14. So now I can write the slope, the, t the equation for the tangent line. I know that the slope is 14 at the point 2 comma 12. And we've done this before. This is slope point. So I'm going to do y minus 12 is equal to 14 times x minus 2. And that is the equation of the tangent line. So you need the slope and the point that it goes through. Okay. Um, the last thing that we're going to look at really quickly is just the derivative of a function at a certain point. So we can say that f prime of c, so the derivative at a certain point c, notice c instead of x, so at a certain point is the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. This is the definition based on the formula for slope. The derivative is calculated slope between two points that is infinitesimally, getting infinitesimally smaller, smaller and smaller. So as h goes to zero, okay? So um, what has to happen is that the left and the right um, derivatives or limits equal each other basically they're you know the slopes have to match otherwise there's no derivative at that point and that is it